Yeah, we're live. So, hi everyone. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom, Lisa. Shalom, Rachel, Yael, Anna, Gigi. Uh, I'm uh, Michal Or, and I'm uh, hosting uh, Lisa, uh, Dr. Lisa Kuni in Israel for the body class and the radically alive beyond alive abuse. beyond beyond abuse class, which are both uh, wonderful classes, and we are very happy to have you in Israel, Lisa. Uh, and uh, you know you've been in Israel. So you're coming back for a class for the first time in Israel, the body class, yes. and the Radically Alive Beyond Abuse. So yes. we'd like to hear from you about it, about those wonderful classes. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, all of you, for being here. And let's just have some fun. And hello, Shalom Israel. So I have really poor Hebrew that I do know that I'll throw in every once in a while. Um, but. I'm really excited to come to Israel for many reasons. Um, I lived there for a period of time in 2000, before 2006, somewhere between 2002, 2006, and wrote my dissertation there. So I'm very, very fond of the land, the food, the smells, the tastes, the country, and I have many, 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 many prayers and notes in the wall, the wall above and the wall below. <laughs> and it's going to be really, really blessed to be back there. And of course, I'm ex so excited to be asked to come and spread not only the Access Consciousness tools, the three-day body class, but also um, my elective called Radically Alive Beyond Abuse. And, you know, being in Israel for a period of time and going back for the high holidays and Yom Kippur and fasting and going to shul regularly and, you know, going to Jerusalem regularly, I just am so grateful to bring the, these body processes through Access Consciousness to this land, this earth, this country that I love but that also has seen many traumas, many atrocities, many abuses and lives in, in my interesting point of view under quite a lot of pressure um, to say the least uh, wars, uh, terrorism, and um, of course uh, the the history of the genocide through the Holocaust. So I am beyond beyond grateful to be coming there and being asked to come there. But also not only to bring the access consciousness material, but the radically alive beyond abuse. I am very called to the land of Israel. I was telling the gals here on one of our last conversations that years and years and years ago when I first went to Israel, I got off the plane and they take you at Ben Gurion Airport and they take you in a little bus to get to the airport and as soon as I got off I just fell on my knees and kissed the earth and this is coming from a New Yorker and we don't do that. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure what that was but that's when I knew. Um, that's when I knew that there's there something different, something mystical, something magical. And it's also just, I mean, I can keep talking, just it's like all the world's religions collide in one place. And how can we contribute to the consciousness and not the collision? What do you sense the radically uh, life beyond abuse can, uh, uh, can bring to the people and to the, to the land? Uh, freedom and possibility and the elimination of trauma on the earth, on the land, and on people's bodies. Um, I had a friend at the time that I, that I stayed with in Israel and her daughter, Talia, she um, had such vivid memories of the Yom Kippur War and some of the other wars and living with a having to live with the oxygen mask and she was you know 10, 11, 12 um, when the sirens would ring and she developed asthma and I used to do energy work on her to relieve some of those asthma symptoms which were all related to um, the trauma that she smothered in her chest 
about the panic that she lived in being 10, 11, and 12 and hearing the sirens and, and knowing that there was a potential war or a potential threat or a potential of something. And that's, you know, I come from America, I come from New York. I mean, we've had 9-11, but we have never had what, what you guys have had there. So my hope is that I do a small part in um, small part or a big part in in eliminating the abuses off the land and off the body, so all children and all people can be alive in possibility and contribute to consciousness, peace, joy, and harmony on the planet. Is that okay? Amen. To say? Amen. <laughs> oh yeah. May I add something to that? Sure. All right, what I've sensed a lot, and my mother is a Holocaust survivor, I grew up uh, until I was 10 in Israel, I remember sirens, I remember the, the beginning of the Yom Kippur War, and I remember my brother painting the headlights of the car in blue so that you know they wouldn't be seen by, any cars driving wouldn't be seen by anybody overhead. Um, and of course, I've I've left it, but I remember there's so much like tension and so much stress that gets locked up in our bodies, right. that gets stored in our cells, that stays there for whatever reason, for however many years. I, I see it. I mean, the Holocaust ended, you know, many, many, many years ago, and my mother still has lots and lots of of all of that locked up, even though I've run lots of body processes on her. She's uh, living in the United States, I'm in Guatemala, so I don't get to see her all the time, but whenever I'm there, I do everything that I can, and there's still so much more, and so much more, and it's not only related to war. Even if people weren't right. living in Israel, and they weren't living under a stressful environment, how much of being in this reality ends up being stressful, abusive, you know, the self-abuse that we do to ourselves uh, by trying to fit in, by trying to be like everybody else says that we should be. There's so much that we lock up in ourselves and these processes just give us so much more space and so much more ease and I've had the great pleasure of listening to your Voice America show for quite a few of the episodes and I enjoy mm -hmm. it very much. Thank you. Uh, everybody who's listening to this is invited to look up uh, in voiceamerica.com, look up host Dr. Lisa Cooney and you can listen to the shows, they're fantastic. And there's such an invitation and a space to not have to be the past, to not have mm -hmm. to operate from that, but be able to choose something different. And we tend to live so much of our life as a response to what happens around us as opposed to recognizing how much we can choose to create. So uh, to me that's phenomenal. If I were with you guys in Israel, I'd be right there in Lisa's class. Um, and totally I lean right away. Take advantage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I think you're really, really spot on there, Rachel, about um, radically alive beyond abuse and the body processes and the body classes is really about taking the reaction that we respond with automatically to situations with our body, with our health, with our finances, with our beloveds and enjoyable others, with, with our spirituality, um, with the earth, with the land, with other people, and removing the toxicity from those responses. And then therein removing the reaction and doing what you said, Rachel, which is expanding as space and creating from possibility. And just by being that space of possibility, what influence can you change in your life with the people around you? So it's not just about the wars, like you said. That was just something that I felt so specifically drawn to when I was there. And it was so interesting, so interesting living there with all of that around, like living in the guise of the Holocaust, if you will, rightfully so, and then and then with the wars on top of it, and then all the stuff about being in this reality and on our bodies and, and everything else that this reality puts on us in a certain way or can put on us, how can we change that? That's what I'm invested in. How can we bring more consciousness to Israel during these four or five days of classes? And what invitation 
is this to you all out there who are listening to come join us. Like we require you, you, your body, your knowing, your awareness, your consciousness, all of us. Michael came to me, Yael came, Rachel's coming, my team is coming, you know, I'm coming, we're responding to a call. My target is to eliminate and eradicate all forms of abuse off this planet as much as possible that I can in this quote unquote the beyond abuse revolution and empower all individuals to live radically and orgasmically alive. That's why I'm coming there. And how's it getting better to do that in Tel Aviv and Herzliya where I can get some hummus and a full kazakh <laughs> and some tabbouli and halloumi cheese sandwiches? I can't wait for that. <laughs> it's true, I love them. Going to the Aroma Cafe and get a halloumi cheese sandwich. <laughs> so we're waiting for you here with the halloumi sandwich. <laughs> All right. I will take it. And don't forget the, I've the never hummus. had a halloumi cheese sandwich in, in Israel, only in Cyprus. <laughs> How does it get any better than that? <laughs> ah, just remember. I can still remember the taste. So, so what else do we want to talk about here um, about Israel? And, and what do you want to know? I know we have some questions. Anybody want to throw in a question? Well, one of the things that I would like to make a little comment prior to, to you guys going into the questions is that Every single person who's going to come to the class, or I don't know if you guys are doing a bars exchange or an intro evening or some way of meeting you for, for more people, might be a, um, a neat idea. But regardless, everybody who comes, everybody who gets shifted, everybody who's uh, experiencing this in their body is then able to take this and work with these energies for every other person who's come to them. Now one of the things that I found out about Israel fairly recently is that they started with about a handful of bars facilitators in September, and I yeah. think Irela, and now there's just a poof, a wow, how does it get any better than this? 40 some odd facilitators. If every single one of them and practitioners and, and people who would like to become facilitators would come through the class and learn these processes and learn just a few little tools to have more ease in their life and to be able to take that ease and, and, and spread it to every single person who comes to them including their family, their friends, their neighbors. I'm not saying go facilitate everybody who's not necessarily asking you a question but that space, that invitation, that possibility that you be with these tools will change everything around you. And it's like a ripple effect. You become this, this pebble that drops into a pond and then everything spreads out. And imagine the shifts in, in everyone's lives that's going to be near you, touching you, around you, that you can invite them to a whole world that they don't even realize exists yet. So how wow, does that was really beautiful. That was really beautiful, Rachel. Thank you for that. And thank you for saying that because that ties in a little bit to, to how I teach the classes. So I am a practitioner, a certified facilitator in access consciousness, but I also have a doctorate in psychology, a license as a marriage and uh, family therapist here in the States, and I'm a master theta healer, uh, just like Michael. That's how we actually met uh, through the theta healing community and now the access consciousness community. And um, there is so much that I intend and desire to share with you during the classes, the Radically Alive Beyond Abuse, a taster class, an introduction, bring the, the Afu Kazakh for me, maybe some hummus, some tawuli. <laughs> um, and Do some folk dancing. Yes, folk dancing, go to a D1, I loved it all. Uh, <laughs> my favorite band at the time was Sheva. <laughs> um, so, and th what I do is I teach the, my classes in three ways. I teach them according to whatever the, the class requires of me to, to get across absolutely and in depth. I also teach you as a practitioner, so like in a certified facilitator in whatever walk of life, access, daily healing, you know, counseling, attorney, doctor, massage therapist, acupuncturist, whatever it is that you do, mother. Um, and how, how to empower you to be you and to be the quote-unquote healer and practitioner and the, the um, 
well, the healer that you be. And then I also share with you my interesting point of view and empower you through conceptualization, essentially, of how to utilize the tools of access consciousness, the body processes, with your particular clients. So like case studies and consultation, if you will. I was trained in one of the, the only one in this country that I know about, a two-way mirror where my supervisor in my master's degree would sit behind a two-way mirror and this was all part of the clinic and every 15 minutes I would hear a tap 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 on the mirror and I have to go in and and um, talk to her and conceptualize where I was going with this client and I was dealing with dual diagnosis, bipolar, borderline personality, it was a suicide prevention center, I was a clinical director of a treatment center for sexual assault and victims and their families and um, so many depression, anxiety. So I have a lot of um, wealth of knowledge, if you will, that just gets kind of stuck up here. And I, and I want to just like give it and put it out there to all the world and everywhere because it works. And I was really, really trained really well and trained in an empowering way, not in a teaching way where you got to do this. And I wish to give that back for all that I had as the wind beneath my wings because I've been you know solo and uh, a solo entrepreneur so to speak uh, for 25 years and I've done the traditional well never really too traditional hypnotherapy, mat counseling, licensed marriage and family therapist, doctorate, energy healing, baby healing, access consciousness there's a lot in my toolbox that I can demonstrate through these processes like how do you work with disease? Well, I worked with, I cured myself of a thyroid disease, an endocrine disorder disease, in three weeks using energy healing modality. I've worked with HIV patients. I've worked with breast cancer and different types of cancers. And I can draw on all the knowledge that I have got plus my own awareness and then pull out all of your awareness and your knowledge and what can we create together? changing the energetic reality of Israel and everybody in your life. Thank that's, you. what I'm, that's what I'm going there to do. Just a small task. <laughs> small um, thank you for, for, for giving us like the broader view about how many things uh, people here can be contributed to. Uh, and I saw a few videos from your site and also one of the programs on Voice America and like I would love it if a lot of people see uh, abuse as one thing or one area and it is so broad and I think yeah. the people here and the earth and the fear like when we're not in a war and people open the news every night at 8 o'clock they're, they're in constant abuse. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I think the news are super abusive to our bodies, our beings, and the earth. Mm. <laughs> it's fear mongering for the yeah. most and part. And also kind of a method to scare people to get together, I don't know, in the Jewish people, when they are abused, when they are in fear. So what else is possible? Um, it's a great question, Yael, and I'm, I'm so... Oh, sorry, hon, go ahead. Okay, yeah. It's a great question and I appreciate that because I, when I was in India at the seven day with Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, I said, I said to Gary, I said, Gary, every class, I've done about 10 of these Radically Alive Beyond Abuse classes now in, in probably 10 different countries and everybody says the one thing, well, I don't want to go to that class because all they're doing is talking about sexual abuse and I didn't have sexual abuse so that doesn't fit for me. Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm not just going around the world to pick apart whether you've been sexually abused or not, okay? So let's just, you know, throw that out. However, throw it in the zevil, right? That's Hebrew term, the zevil. Um, however, if you have sexual abuse in your history, or you have clients that have been sexually abused, or know somebody that has been at the hands of a pedophile or a perpetrator, well, you got me. I'm an expert in it. That's easy for me to work with. And people like even Gigi on the call here, she said in six minutes I walked her through 10 years of therapy. So if that's something that's of interest to you, let, let's try that. 
But Yael, you said it correctly, and this is what Gary told me to do. He said, start the class out with, what does abuse mean to you? What does abuse mean to you? What does abuse mean in your country? What does abuse in this land mean to you? What does abuse as a woman mean to you? What does abuse as a man mean to you? And he said specifically that abuse, like Rachel said also, gets locked on our bodies and imprinted and implanted on our bodies. And then without ever talking about it, we develop these barriers and these armors to block ourselves from even our own knowing, our own wisdom, our own awareness, our own wellness, our own abundance, our own love, joy, peace, and harmony. And this class really came to me as the catalyst for this Beyond Abuse revolution to get a revolutionary conversation about abuse off the bodies using some clearing statements, using some body processes to free all of us from the, the, the media. I mean, you guys have it, you know, I would, I mean, it's pretty much fair to say you guys have it in Israel a lot more than we have here, but we also have it here too, and I'm not so sure about Guatemala, but I remember, like, I can't even stand listening to the news because everything is just so negative, and everybody's going to die, everything's going to blow up, and everybody's raped and killed and shot and, you know, stabbed and this or that or this culture is going after this culture, race, religion. It's like it's designed to keep people segregated and separate. Mm -hmm. Radically Alive Beyond Abuse is designed to undo the segregation and the separateness and bring all of us to communion with our bodies, with each other, and with the earth. Now, that doesn't mean you have to like me or I have to like you, but it does mean let's have allowance for each other. You know, I've been through much stuff in my life, many, many, many decades of abuse, sexual, physical, emotional, financial, energetic, and I'm probably the least judgmental person <laughs> that I know, probably more judgmental on me, you know, which I'm still, you know, getting better at. Mm -hmm. um, because I have a great space of allowance knowing that if somebody gets to the place of judgment and anger and rage and takes it out on another, I know what that place is. I'm not innocent. I've done that. I've been harsh with my words. I've been mean. I've been under the guise of my own abuse. I've been through the filter of insanity as my reality. And if any of this applies to you and you want to peel away the inventions that you've created as your identity of yourself, even just the wrongness of you, if you want to peel that away to the strongness of you, the rightness of you, then come play with us. We're going to have a lot of laughs. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be pretty freaking potent in that country that is full of like the, the teeming and tinkling of mysticism. You know, I don't know how else to explain it, but that's that's what I well, feel when I'm there. Way. Every single clearing, everything that happens when people are willing to let go, every single pock and pod and clearing statement that you do affects another 350,000 other people. Now, exponentialize that. That's just you, okay? How many people will be in the room with you? Multiply that by 350,000 other people. I'd say the Middle East is going to get a little bit of a change. Absolutely. Or a lot of it change. Absolutely. And what would it take to create something totally beyond anything that we've ever known possible throughout the Middle East, throughout the world? Create a whole different reality. That would be amazing. Exactly. Go for it. Exactly. And that's, I mean, you, you're just giving energy, Rachel, to the Beyond Abuse Revolution. That's what, that's... That's a separate. That's the name of the business that I'm the catalyst for. But the Beyond Abuse Revolution has its own target, and I said that to you to empower, eliminate, and eradicate all uh, abuse in all of its forms off off the planet as best we can, and empower all individuals to live radically and orgasmically alive. That is the energy of consciousness. I am leading a revolution, and I would love for you all, you're all here, to join me in this revolution. Because we need you, and we require Israel. You know, we require the Middle East. We require, we require pockets of you being you, and the difference that you be. If you've ever like doubted yourself and like, what, what am I to do here? What am I to be here? 
I know there's something more possible. I know there's something else for me here. I know I can make a difference. I know I can make a contribution. Well, come and join us and find out how we can do it together. Whether you're an access consciousness facilitator, whether you come from the Theta Healing community, whether you're a hypnotherapist, acupuncturist, massage therapist, an attorney, or a, a teacher, belly or a mother. Dancer. Or a Bali, a what or dancer? A belly dancer. Or belly a belly dancer. dancer. It could be anybody. A musician. You know, who cares? You know, if you're in the army, not in the army. Come. Come, come, come. I remember when I did I did my first uh, breathwork workshop in in Israel. We did it in a bomb shelter, and that was a holotropic breathwork uh, workshop. I had to bring these hoses, and we had to get these punching bags. So it was really fun going through security in the United States, <laughs> getting all this stuff to Israel and all my crystals at the time. It's really embarrassing, but it's true. But man, <laughs> that to to hear. The banging, and I didn't speak Hebrew at the time I learned it when I was there. The banging out in a culture that had been silenced, and this was a long time ago, so please, if I'm offending you, I don't mean to. It's just what my experience was 10 years ago. And like it was like as they were banging on the bag and getting all this stuff off their body, they were saying things that I knew there was a tone that was changing the frequency of the planet. When I was doing another breathwork workshop out of the bomb shelter, and I didn't speak my the the I didn't speak Hebrew very well at that time either, and my translator was also working with somebody, and I had to work with somebody who was in a, a reaction, an emotional state, and you know what I learned? I learned that anger and sadness and fear and shame and hurt it doesn't matter what language you speak. It all has the same tone. It all has the same vibration. And we all carry it on our bodies in a certain way. We're not different or separate. We're actually very much the same. We just look different. We have a different gender, different hair, different eyes. We've been through different things. But somewhere inside here, our molecules are the same. And that's... And Lisa... Mm -hmm. I'd Sorry, I'd like to add something. I'd like to, yeah. it's not so much add as really clarify. It's the abuse that we tend to hold in our bodies and to hold in our culture and sometimes hold in our lineage, um, especially in terms of Judaism. We've got mm -hmm. lots of that going on. Um, it doesn't have to be the sexual abuse. Uh, when people tell me, oh, I don't require to go to money class because I've got no issues with money, that tells me they already have an issue with money because they've already decided something is right about their lives. The same thing with this. There's no right, there's no wrong, there's just what it is and how it can change and shift and expand. And it's not about saying, oh, well, this is only about this kind of abuse or about that kind of abuse. How much abuse is not even, you were saying, implanted and explanted in our bodies? How much of it is from previous lifetimes? How much of it is things that we've we've brought in to this embodiment, to this particular journey that we're on, and we're still operating from that? I remember uh, a monkey that, I think it's in the Talk to the Animals book, if I'm not mistaken, that Gary Douglas was working with a monkey, and he perceived these um, implants that were implanted in this monkey's body like eons ago and they were still affecting him. He kept on pulling at his chest. So how much of it isn't cognitive? You might be living a, a kind of leave it to beaver, everything so wonderful and perfect and fantastic kind of life and nothing traumatic has ever happened to me kind of life and yet how much are you resisting really everything that is possible for you when you're willing to look beyond what you've already defined as correct? Very true and very beautiful and and I'll tell you that is that takes a tenacity of consciousness to do what you're doing. So if you're if if this is speaking to any of you out there, know that if you do choose to look at the the inventions that you have stored on your body and the realities that you made yours, if you choose to look and see if those realities are actually ones you still want to or desire to believe now, then definitely come to the class and definitely come or the classes and definitely come even if you're too scared to look because we can show you an easy way 
to take a look at the things you want to change. And it's just like a one degree shift. A one degree shift can change anything. And you're all capable of that. We're all capable of that. Do we have and any if questions? it happens to be 40 degrees, that would be great too. Oh God. <laughs> hump scene. I was there doing a hump scene. Oh my God. <laughs> it was hot. I thought I lived in Ari I lived in Arizona for so many years and I used to describe it as like living in a hair dryer. It's and good we are close to the beach so we can go swimming and if it's hot, if it's too hot. <laughs> I know, and that's the great thing. When you said in Herzliya and the coast of Tel Aviv, I was like, I know that beach. I walked on that beach. I remember my feet there. Mm -hmm. That ocean. I remember this chocolate shop I went to, too, <laughs> in Tel Aviv. You guys could do lunch breaks on the beach. Oh, that would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be great? Do we have any questions you, that anybody has asked? Can you share with us some mm -hmm. of uh, your experience with the body processes in, in your clinics? Oh, sure. Um, do you have a specific question or about a specific body process or do you want me to just use my awareness and talk? <laughs> yes, yes, you okay, use your yes. awareness. <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Um, so the first thing well, I can tell you... Well, you've also had experience with the, the, the scans that you do. I think that would be really interesting for people and maybe on the Google Hangouts or, or the one in Israel, post a link to the previous ones that you've done that explain some of the... Hmm. And Elena, do you have... Um, could you pull up one of the pictures of um, the, the thermometry PowerPoint? Um, not the whole That's PowerPoint, but one or two of the pictures, and I can, I can give you a visual, but until then... Um, yeah. Let me, is it someone special who would like to have? Uh, go to the um, go to the full body pictures of each of the the case studies in that PowerPoint. This yes. will for you that are access consciousness facilitators. Um, I just uh, and it'll come out in the newsletter, and we actually just did a Google Hangout on this, and it'll be in the access consciousness newsletter um, about the thermometry. Um, PowerPoint that I did with Access Consciousness the Bars, and again, this is not saying that Access believes or you know endorses the thermometry machine. I just want to be clear. But all I did was had a question. I asked a question, and I wondered what what could I show the world that these body processes actually do. So while Annalena is getting that ready, uh, I'll tell you just cognitively my own experience, and you guys can also share yourself. So. I've been in, I work with um, people predominantly that want to move beyond their boot abuse. And they have had, you know, decades of, of sexual, physical, emotional, financial, and mental abuse, domestic violence. Um, and it goes, you know, all sorts, it runs the line from the horrifically extreme to some of the things that people would say, is that really abuse? Like someone calling you a jerk? You know, so there's a whole world apart between you know, abuse as a continuum. Um, and what I started, when I started using the access consciousness body processes in the bars, my clients, the severely abused ones specifically, started to no longer have the abuse be like this, where I could only see, you know, you through the filter of it, through the insanity of it. It started to just kind of open up and pull away where they can actually see more clearly, their symptoms of depression and anxiety decreased, their health got better, their financial situation got better, and their relationships got better. You know, people come to me in 25 years of private practice and a group practice and international practice, people come to me for three reasons. They want more money, they're having relationship problems, or they're sick and they don't feel well. Underneath all of those three, somewhere lies some sort of abuse. This is just my experience. I'm not trying to have you believe me and I'm not trying to make everybody, you know, deal with abuse. It's just know that I haven't seen anything else <laughs> in 25 years. Everybody comes with the same thing. And well, how much do we also abuse ourselves? And with our own judgments, like you were saying you're working on, we all seem to do that. And that seems to be to me the biggest abuser. Yeah, of ourselves. The internal judge, right? The destroyer in all of us. 
Uh, one of the words that have, has been coming to me a lot and also in this conversation is, is like what would it take for the addiction of self-abuse? Like we've got the outside abuse but we've also got this inner abuse and we, it seems that we, we're addicted to it. Um, so it's a great question, Yael, and that's the part about the realities I was talking to you about. Like whose reality is that addictive abuse within you? Like I know for myself, I really internal, internalized my mother's beliefs about me being evil and that no one would ever love me. One day I literally asked Gary Douglas, the founder, and I, I'd never been able to say this to anybody, I said, Gary, sometimes it's really hard for me to look people in the eyes because I still think that they will see what my mother told me that I was, which was evil and that no one would ever love me. And I, you know, I know it sounds so silly as I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm looking in the eyes of everybody, but that was something that plagued me for a very long time and actually created the disease that I had before, well before I got into access consciousness and I cured with theta healing. And it's these beliefs that we, that we develop, I kind of see like a belief like the hub of a wheel. And then, you know, like I'm evil, let's say. And then the spokes on the wheel are like all the judgments that Rachel and the Yael were talking about that hold it in place. And then we put a, you know, a metal, rim around it <laughs> to keep it locked in place, sealed if you will. Probably lots of them. Yes. Lots of those. And then the tire and like you can never get to the you can never get to the hub of that evil. You just keep pulling away. Access would call it nucleated spheres, you know, those bubble pipes you never get to the bottom. And what I found with the body process is boom, we're at the bottom. And I also found that, you know, with baby healing. So I feel very grateful that the that these two modalities are out on the planet and right now I'm coming to Israel to, to do access consciousness um, and that deals specifically with the body, hands on the body in different ways, evoking the body's intrinsic capacity to heal. And Annalena, do we have the slides yeah. yet? Yes. Okay, so show me a slide because it's perfect timing. Show me your slide. It's coming. Is it coming? Talk amongst yourselves. Have some coffee. Okay. <laughs> Do you see that? I can see that. So, let me see. This was this was a before bars what, and Anna after. Lina, click click on yourself and then over oh, there. I clicked on you. I don't know if that helps. Can everybody see that, or is that just on my screen? Yeah, I, screen? I just clicked on Elena okay, and too. it comes. Everybody okay. click on Annalena and Annalena click on yourself. <laughs> Um, so this is just one study of one woman. We did bars. We did a thermometry test before the bar session. We ran bars for 32 points in the head, 75 minutes, and here it was after 75 minutes. Now I don't want to get too much into what 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 all this is. I know it because can, we can be here for another hour and a half, <laughs> and I do have a Voice America radio show on today, um, <laughs> so I'm going to have to get to that soon, but. What I want to show you is that if you look at the screen on the left and the screen on the right, for those of you that have never seen something like this before, what would you say? Just anything. Play with me. I'd say she got a lot more colorful after the bar session, and to me that's wonderful because there's movement. Things Great. are shifting. Like, look at her neck. Things are actually not as blocked. They're starting to move. Correct. What else would you guys say? First thought, best thought. No one's right, no one's wrong. What do you see? Is it oh, intriguing? I was just looking at the neck. Yes. Okay. It's, lots of, it's lots of things that had already um, um, get out of the body. If you look at her uh, stomach and... Uh, mm -hmm. exactly, that is oh, exactly yeah. what both of you are saying, active movement, right? That's exactly what the body processes do. They stimulate the immune system, they, they, and then they produce like a rapid detoxification of toxicity in the body. They open up all your elimination pathways, which are your kidneys and sacrum. It's in the small bottom picture, your kidneys and sacrum. And, and look, even in the ovary area on the after session, the ovary and the uterus it's of this clear. woman, it's clear. Now, that's just 75 minutes. Now we're not diagnosing anything, we're not saying anybody's sick or anybody's not sick. That's not what this is. This is a picture just of the body. 
right now. And in 75 min minutes, is it worth it to lay yourself down on a table for 75 mm -hmm. minutes for your body to have the peace and the calm uh, of that? Now, the whole PowerPoint is on a, a Facebook group called What's the Body Know? What the Body Knows and What the Body Shows. And it'll show you degrees also about what the client reported. They had anxiety and depression in the beginning and not so clear, clarity, what, what not, and then after the bars it was completely different. They had no anxiety, no depression, and they felt completely clear. So that's what can occur when we work with access consciousness in these classes. This is what you as practitioners are doing for the bodies in Israel. How could the body after a bar session in Israel. If we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people doing this, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, millions doing this in your country, how could that impart and effect change? Right? That more clarity, less depression? <laughs> That's more more productivity, less anxiety. So I can Less can share my, my experience from the body class. I can share my experience from the three-day body class, which is really very, it's instead of being abusive to yourself, it's being kind to yourself and being very nurturing, the, the body uh, processes, being in the class, it's a, a total gift, it's a wonderful gift I gave to myself and I <laughs> invite other people to give to themselves as well because it really was very nurturing, very peaceful, very, it connected me more to my body mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's something beyond words what happened in the treaty body class. It really is. I have to, I have to agree with you on that too and, and you know I became a body class facilitator probably about eight months into my certifi certified facilitator status with access. I mean it was a lot of work and, and, and it was so fun because I knew I'd been looking all my life, all my career, I found one thing in Theta Healing and then these body processes, I found the other piece and it was just like boom, everything came together. I wanted something for the body, for bodies all over the planet and what Gary Douglas and Dr. Dane here have created, I literally as a clinician, as somebody that has been in the mental health field for 20 something years with a good amount of education training, I've never seen it. And I've never seen a date, and I've been to a lot of workshops and facilitated a lot of workshops myself. To facilitate this type of date with your body for three days is such the kind gift. It's so beautiful. And, you know, it's not about your head. It's about your body. And what would your life be like if you actually stopped overriding your body and listened to the wisdom that it's giving you even right now? What if your pains, your sicknesses were actually awareness? That's what I learned about my endocrine disease. I had so much to say and I had so much awareness that I thought I was crazy and the world would kill me if I brought it out. Now I go around the world doing this crazy stuff <laughs> and no one's killed me. <laughs> and most people are saying thank you and listening to your Voice America show as well, at least you know, yeah. a few thousand of us. So yeah. how does it get even better than that? Yeah, 13,000 actually. Yes. Thank you, Rachel, for the plug about Voice America. I really appreciate it. I'm very proud of that, and I'm very proud that we're in so many different countries, and I would love to hear someone from Israel call up the show today from listening to this and, and ask a question um, on that because or on that show and let us facilitate you. I have a guest with me uh, today. And we had we had a specific question, I don't know uh -huh. if it's uh, for here or not, about clearing or clearing our body process, but more clearings for a psoriasis. Psoriasis, yeah. So, um, well, are you saying that they want a clearing right now for psoriasis? They asked if it's possible to have some clearings for that. Um, okay. So first off, I would say, what invention are you using to uh, create the psoriasis you are choosing? Everything that that brings up and lets down, let's destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And all the decisions, judgments, conclusions, and computations at the first moment that you committed to having and being the energy of psoriasis, Let's destroy and uncreate that and revoke, rescind, recant, renounce, denounce, destroy and uncreate the forever commitment throughout all of eternity to be that, have that, and own that 
and incarcerate your body with that right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What I love to do also is when someone has an actual physical issue is I love for you to tell me, if you were here, I would ask you, tell me what your psoriasis would say if it would speak. First thought, best thought, no thought. And then I would have you say it three different times out loud, and then I would clear it, pot and pot it. And all the projections, separations, expectations, rejections, resentments, regrets, creating that to destroy and uncreate it, right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And then I would go into the other way, I'd flip it around and be like, okay, what do you love about psoriasis? And people are always like, I don't love anything about my disease. Well, Hello, me. <laughs> exactly. The truth is, even myself included with my thyroid disease um, that I had, that we as human beings don't do anything just because. We do it because we think it's giving us some positive benefit and usually an illness or a disease or a chronic condition was created at a time long ago that you have no sub that you have no conscious awareness to but your subconscious has the answers. So if we can bypass the mind with the bars and the body process, we can get into the body, which is what we do in the body class, and clear that. I've had great success with um, herpes specifically, sexually transmitted disease, great success with HIV, um, depression, anxiety, really good successes with cancer. Um, and it all depends on if you, the person that's asking the questions, are really willing to have a change. Because I know even in my own healing, I could say I was willing, but I've become more willing over the years. Now I'm just like a demanding, you know what, like I'm having it no matter what. <laughs> not wasting any more time. I'm 45. <laughs> it's really no, amazing. I'd like to that, add, really. I'd like to add that in the class. Sorry, I'd like to add that in the class we will have translation for all the for everything you're saying and for the clearing translation into Hebrew, which is uh, will be important for several some of the people. And uh, there was something else I don't remember now. When are the dates of the class? Do you want to tell them that? The dates of the class, yes, the 14th, the 14th of May will be the Radically Alive Beyond Abuse class and 15th to 17th of May we'll have the three-day body class and we are really looking forward to it. Yes, so all of you out there in Israel who um, are just seeing this for the first time and don't even know anything about Access Consciousness, it, that class does not have prerequisites. However, we will be using the Access Consciousness tools and body processes and I would encourage you at least to get your bars run. Um, you also have the p potential of live streaming Gary and Dane, the founders, first time ever bars and co-facilitation of foundation and level one, which is coming up next week. Um, you take those classes, you can come to not only Radically Alive Beyond Abuse, but also the three-day body class. And then your month of May, after you know the April holy days and whatnot, you're really ready for a change and you're all cleaned out from your cleansing and <laughs> all of that and all the high holidays and man you can make a big difference in your body, your being, your life and inscribe yourself in the book of life. Yes and along the, the, the three-day class and the, of course the Radically Alive uh, uh, Beyond Abuse, uh, you will do facilitation. I mean people can ask questions about their issues and you can, you're doing, uh, you're addressing. Absolutely. The, the whole class is based on your questions. If there's a demand, I will also um, offer some individual sessions to do one of the body processes called the abuse hold. That's one of the things I do whenever I go to different countries is definitely, since this is my specialty, it, it would behoove anybody who desires to have the abuse hold, if you've listened to the CDs, the abuse hold CDs as the prerequisite 30 times. Um, you could have that with me individually and I will be bringing uh, the thermometry machine so if you wanted to get a thermometry I will not be doing to my knowledge another research project of before and after so some people get confused about that. Um, if, uh, if I have more staff and <laughs> we can do that at some time in Israel and demand but we can at least get you one thermometry seeing how your body's doing if that's of interest to you and there is a cost for uh, a price and cost for all of this 
which will um, give you uh, there, which will be standard rates apply for each country. And we'd love to have you there. And I'd love to have you ask questions and contribute and empower you to live the life you always dreamed possible. And can I you. stick my two cents in again because it's fun? You are, your two cents are more like uh, many, many shekels. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's make, make every shekel count. <laughs> um, I was going to say that I've been through a, a few of the three-day body classes and now a couple of the advanced body classes with Gary. Mm -hmm. And like Michal was saying, it is a gift like... I don't have words for the kind of space and the kind of ease and joy that you have with your body. This You, you literally mm. are not the same person walking out of a three-day body class as you were coming in. Not only are you receiving so much change from the body processes themselves, you're also receiving a lot of change from the questions that different people ask from the clearings that you do, whatever comes up for one person in class usually affects a whole lot of other people in the class. And that's what's amazing. Even if you've been to 10 body classes, each one will be very different based on the people who show up, the energy that they bring, and what gets addressed. So I would encourage everyone to come. I would encourage everyone to bring their questions, their issues, their bodies. and it's amazing how much more peace and joy you have with your body. You're no longer just this floating head on a stick. You become <laughs> this whole amazing, you know, person mm -hmm. who, who can contribute to so much in your own life and, and to everyone else around you. So I, that's fantastic. Bring your questions. Any clearings that come up, are fantastic for everyone and every single pock and pot and clearing that's done, that's another 350,000 people around the planet that are going to be changed by it. So what a gift that is. Great. That's I also want to add, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah. Um, I think we, I just checked how to say it uh, in English, so I think the word is downplay, but uh, one of the things that Access Consciousness um, showed me is how much we are not willing to receive and I think this is a great opportunity uh, so we downplay receiving and it's such a great opportunity especially for people that are therapists and that all the time give and give and give and give and give to other people to, to receive for themselves and their bodies mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they can give it to other people but first like, what would it take for us to to allow ourselves to receive? Beautiful. So, Dr. Lisa, do you want to say something before we end? Uh, I actually do, and you probably are going to have to uh, translate it. Not you, Annalena, but the the gal from <laughs> the gals from Israel in Hebrew. But I I, I want to say two things, or probably more than two things. But I also want to invite the men to come. Like I know we're all women here and I some of the best classes that that I facilitate is when there's a balance of the genders and we need you men out there you know to come and join us in these classes and and there's so many good men in Israel and around the surrounding areas that I want to invite you personally to come to the class. Um, I love having you there and as well as all you women out there as well. But I just want to put a particular shout out you know to the man because I know all you ladies are gonna jump in. Um, <laughs> Let me just translate that. As Dr. Lisa Mazmina Yeah. And and besides that, I have to put my glasses on for this, guys. But um, I have uh, <laughs> this is new to me. Um, I I wrote some stuff down from my my time, and I haven't spoken Hebrew in a while. But you're gonna have to translate, otherwise I'll you can make fun of me because I can butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, basically I'm talking about the wall in the old city, which I wrote Yerushalayim Meragashet Ote. How you say it? 
Yeah, Jerusalem moves me. The wall, the old city. Um, I felt like I came home to a deep place of spirit within myself. And Hirshate Shamshe Hazarte Lech Machum Amach Bethauch. I don't know. Is that how you say it? Sort of. <laughs> Sounded kind of like somewhere. German. <laughs> you do it. You do it. You do it. You need to say it in English so we can uh, understand okay. what you said. <laughs> so say, uh, okay, the, the, the wall, the old city, I felt like I came home to a deep place of spirit within myself. Yerushalayim ve'akir meregeshet uti, irgashti shechazarti abayta letoch atzmi. Yeah, and um, I love the taste and the smells of the food. I love the taste and the smells of the food. Ahava, Neshima, Hibukim. I'll do better. So, how does it get even better than that? Say that again, say that again. Ech Yachol Lihiot Od Yoter Tov. How does it get any better than that? And how do you say what else is possible? Ma Shari. <laughs> Much easier, huh, Michal? Ma od Shari. Cool. And may all of life come to you with ease, joy, and glory. Do that one. That uh, we decided not to translate. Okay. As the official translator. Um, oh, that's right, because it's trademark. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the energy, the energy goes through. Okay, yes, it's true. May all of life come and, to you with ease, joy, and glory. So even though I, I, I would like to say that, because this is something that comes up for me in Guatemala as well, sometimes people hesitate because of the language barrier. Besides having a beautiful translator there, please get that everything is energetic. There's energy beneath all of the words that we use. So even if you understand nothing and the only language you speak is Swahili, that's fine. Just being in the room, receiving the body processes and not knowing anything else will shift you because you'll get the energy of all of the clearings and all of the changes that are going on for everyone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your best mm -hmm. way for me is when I fall asleep during the clearings and I get more shifts and more change when I take you know, my little mental mind out of the way. I get a lot more than when I try to figure everything out. This isn't about figuring out. This is about just letting it be, receiving, and being with it. So I encourage you guys to play with that. Um, right on the spot. <laughs> All right. That's a good place to, since we're right on the spot, it's a good place to spot end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both, and thank you all so much, Annalena, for putting this all together, and Gigi, and Michal, and Rachel, and Yael, and myself, and to all of you out there in Israel and beyond, come and play. Thank, thank you. We're waiting for you. you. Bye. Bye. Bring, Bye. Bring yourself Bye. and come play. <laughs>